Tonight's webinar is all about physical activity and exercise for arthritis. Now, if you've seen this particular one before, we always deliver on the same or very similar topics, okay? And then we also add in some um, more niche ones that we can deep dive. I do try my very best to change them up, add more or different information or update them. So that's what I've done here tonight. Some of the information you may have heard before, but that's okay. I'm reinforcing good um, and important messages. And it's always good to have a recap, I would say. Okay. Very quickly, the presentation contains general information only. Every effort has been made to ensure that the information is accurate, reliable. Um, the information here tonight is not a substitute for your individual treatment advice of your doctor or healthcare professional, and certainly always consult with them um, to obtain individual medical advice or treatment. Okay, so a bit of an outline of tonight. We're just covering three major um, three major topics. We're looking at the benefits of exercise. Again, we might know some of the benefits. And again, this would just be a little bit of a refresher or a reminder for you. We're going to have a look at how we might manage pain and arthritis through pacing. And then we're going to have a look at the types of exercises for arthritis and when and if you um, experience pain when exercising and when it might be the time to see a doctor or, or be concerned about the pain that you might be experiencing. Okay. Benefits of exercise. Uh, certainly, I love this picture. Uh, underrated benefits of, of exercise. So as you can see here, we've got a few mentioned increased energy levels over time. How many times has it been either, well, the heat can make you rather lethargic, but certainly when it's cold or you just don't want to get out of bed, but you do, you drag yourself out of bed and, and you get up and you go for the walk. And, and while initially you didn't want to do it afterwards, it's not often you regret it because you often feel energized, certainly. And because of that, I feel like it makes you feel better. So it helps with our well-being, improved overall health and well-being, improved movement and ability, stress and anxiety relief. So it's fantastic. So we're going to have a little look at that in a bit more detail. But first, I want to get your um, gauge on this true or false statement. What you're going to do is you're going to use a chat box for this. You're going to put a, a, T, a T or an F to this statement. Exercise causes further damage to my joints. Now I'm going to bring up the chat box and I want to see our answers. And not everybody has to answer. That's okay. I understand. You want to participate. You're welcome to. Okay. Oh, great. God. Look, you've all been here before. All right. Well, I'm pretty sure nearly, I, th I think everybody was, um, everybody had the right idea. The answer is false. And we want to get across the main message that exercise is, so, it's, is safe. And it doesn't, not necessarily. It doesn't harm the joints, certainly doesn't harm what cartilage you have within your joints. And they benefit very much from exercise so long as it's done with consideration and in moderation. And in fact, if you didn't know, exercise can stimulate stalled or reduced regenerative processes and help improve joint, um, joint cartilage composition, which is a really good thing. So much, as much as it can be difficult um, to get going, um, it has tremendous benefits to our overall health, but also to the health of the joints. All joints, um, both those affected with arthritis and not. And even people with hand arthritis, 
And I know that's non-weight bearing um, and you don't necessarily do exercises like that, <laughs> lifting little dumbbells with your, with your fingers, but exercise and reducing low-grade systemic inflammation in the body, reducing any excess weight can significantly help arthritis in our peripherals, i.e. our fingers or our toes. Okay, here's another one. Exercise causes flare-ups. Now, this is mainly, I'm talking in the context of those people with rheumatic autoimmune conditions. So exercise causes flare-ups. True or false? You can add it in the chat box. Let's see. If you've recently just joined us, please ensure that your mic is on mute. All right. Perhaps this, this question or this statement wasn't as straightforward as the other. Um, but all in all, or what the research points to is that the answer is false. When it comes to flares, there's not a lot or limited data that supports exercise causes flare-ups in those people, for example, with rheumatoid arthritis. Now, it, that remember, when it comes to research, research generalizes um, generalizes the outcome. Okay, and if it's generalized, if it's is if it's able to be generalized to that particular population, then there's some pretty good evidence to support it. Okay, but but there are always people that are outliers or on the ends of the bell curve. So there are people where exercise or a particular type of exercise may cause may cause a genuine flare up. Often the case is that, um, and we're going to talk about it soon, that we might overdo it. And that does cause a little bit of pain, perhaps some swelling, not necessarily major inflammation later on. But all in all, um, exercise doesn't cause flare ups. I don't know why this banner isn't going away. Hmm. Oh, my apologies. Um, should you exercise um, with arthritis? Well, we sort of covered that, but the general statement being all people with arthritis, um, and, and here we've got osteoarthritis, um, but people with any type of arthritis should be advised to exercise. It is the number one management tool for managing arthritis and its accompanying pain. Um, it's as a core treatment, irrespective of age, comorbidities, pain, severity, or disability. It's just about how you do it. It's your level of comfort. It's your level of disability. It's your level of symptom. Okay, so then why is exercise so important? Just a little bit of a recap about anatomy here. Remembering that <clears throat> arthritis in any form uh, affects the cartilage, okay? And in the chat box, maybe you can have a crack at why cartilage, what, cart what, what does cartilage do for us? Why it is important that we have cartilage? What's its role or function in the body? Does anybody know? Anybody wanna have a crack in the chat box? What's the deal with cartilage? Cushions. <laughs> yes. Yes, someone mentioned it stops bone on bone. Well, yes, of course. Um, if there's nothing in between, then the bones can, um, uh, the gap between, the, the joint gap narrows, becomes less, and yes, the bones do. Um, come together or can yeah look cushions is a good one I like that so it's a type of connective tissue and essentially it protects and it cushions uh, the bones at either end that form the joint okay and what it also does is it resists compressive forces so it cushions and disperses or distributes load and absorb and helps to absorb impact. So it's very important in everything that we do, okay? And if it's not there, you're right. What, where, where is that impact going to go, okay? If it's not there, 
There's no joint space anymore. There's no cushioning effect and the bones can come together. And of course, that's going to cause stiffness, sometimes deformity and disability and lack of range of motion and excessive pain. Um, Bill mentioned lubricant. Um, that's, that's interesting that you say that um, because cartilage isn't necessarily the lubricant, but it needs to be lubricated. And what, what lubricates it is um, this fluid, clear, clearish fluid that sits in, in the joint cavity here. And that's what we call synovial fluid. And I'm actually glad that you brought that up because I'm just about to talk about it. So <clears throat> what I want you to think of or liken your cartilage to is, oh yeah, so, so it nourishes um, um, our cartilage and, and bone. Oh, that's what exercise does. So exercise helps to nourish cartilage and bone. So um, what I want you to think of your cartilage being like is a sponge. And why I want you to think of it like that is because, let's move that out of the way, um, <clears throat> is that your cartilage soaks up or needs to soak up the synovial fluid to keep it healthy and the reason being is that it's a vascular and a neural that means it doesn't have a blood supply to to give it nutrition um, or it doesn't have a waste removal service so um, nerves and blood supply give things life essentially um, it doesn't have this, but what it does have is synovial fluid. And synovial fluid keeps it plump. It keeps it healthy. It nourishes the cartilage. And there are cells within the cartilage that soak up the synovial fluid or the elements of it that it needs, okay, to keep it nice and plump and healthy. What also needs to happen is that that fluid needs to come in and out, okay? That's the waste removal surface. That's keeping it nice and healthy, Okay, needs to come in and out, in and out, like fresh water, essentially. It can't go stagnant, okay? How that water... Excuse me. Out. Uh, hello. Hello. Yeah, I just wanted to ask a question. That fluid you're talking about, is that the same fluid that's in your bursa, in your hips or not? Very similar, yes. It has similar properties, if not the same. Okay, so why do some people have clear flare-ups with their bursts or other people don't? It's a really good question. Tonight we're talking about cartilage and the synovial fluid that surrounds that. If we have time at the end, I can cover that. But right now okay. I'm going to... Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. Just a reminder for everybody to put themselves on mute for me. Um, so the sponge soaks up water. The synovial fluid needs to move in and out, okay, to keep the cartilage healthy. And what pushes or what squeezes the synovial fluid out is load. So load from weight-bearing exercises. And this is a, the, the reason why exercise, weight-bearing exercise, is so incredibly important for the health of your cartilage. So what I want you to think about is motion is lotion. So the more movement that you're doing, the more weight-bearing exercises that you're doing, the more lotion or, or, or lubrication that you're providing for your cartilage, the more you're nourishing your cartilage, whatever cartilage you may have left. And then you're also maintaining what you have to reduce um, the severity of or the development of arthritis more so osteoarthritis, but certainly keeping any cartilage healthy that you have left for any other type of arthritis. Okay, other benefits. We sort of spoke about those. So we keep our muscles nice and strong. This is a great other benefit too, to reduce falls. So as we get older, particularly in females who are postmenopausal, we want to reduce the risk of falls, okay? We have a higher increase of fractures. We control our weight. So if we're carrying a little bit more weight, and particularly if our bodies are in a state of inflammation because of um, adipose tissue, excess adipose tissue, and the types of foods that we're eating, this can also exacerbate, cause, or trigger arthritis. So it can help control weight for us. 
It over time can reduce pain and stiffness, reduce muscle tension, um, reduces the chance of the joint changes becoming worse. Okay, so even if they may not get better, they're we're going to have reduced a chance of the joint changes becoming worse. Can improve our sleep. We know if we have sleep, um, we're feeling better. We have the energy to exercise. We can handle the stress better. And that, that negative pain loop because of lack of sleep is also reduced and certainly creates a feeling of well-being. So how much exercise should you do? Should you do? Um, keep it, keeping it to moderate intensity, um, aerobic activity, we should be trying to accumulate 150 minutes per week, so over the week. And you can do that however you like. You might do more on one day uh, because just it's, you have the opportunity to do so. Um, but what I suggest that you do so we don't get into a, a bad cycle with pain and stiffness is we try to keep it consistent over the five or seven days, okay? And it could be 15, 30 minutes. So anything that gets your heart beating faster, that counts, okay? So increasing all that incidental type activity, but also planned exercise. Now, aerobic. So that's things like... Um, exercise like walking like cycling like swimming like grouped exercise or games gardening for example has an element of cardio while you need to include um cardio 150 minutes of that spread over the week muscle strengthening activity is a must so this should be done at least two days per week and we're looking at body weight exercises, but to increase that to perhaps more loaded exercises, perhaps using weights or resistant bands. And for those who are a little hesitant to exercise or movement avoidance because of pain perhaps and the type of disability that you have, and you haven't particularly picked up exercise or um, have a habit of it, just starting with five minutes is, is, a, is a huge step in the right direction because it all adds up. Now, just a quick comment on intensity. So that's hard to say, <laughs> go at a moderate intensity. What's a moderate intensity unless you've got um, a heart rate monitor and, and you know of your max heart rate where your moderate intensity sits. So if you don't have a heart rate monitor or anything like that, you might like to measure it using the talk test. If you're doing moderate activity, you can talk through the activity, but you may not be able to sing, which might be a good thing. I don't know. You might be a good or you might be a bad singer. I'm not sure, but you can't sing. Okay. Remember, because to sing, you'd have to take in you know, a big deep breaths um, um, and it's also forceful to get out as you're singing. Okay, so you can just talk to your friend during that activity. You can do vigorous activity, go ahead, increase the intensity, um, but you probably not, but, but this kind of activity, you won't be able to say more than a few words without pausing to take a breath. Okay, so keep that talk test in mind. So, are all types the same? in regards to exercise, okay? So um, very similar to, to nutrition and diet for arthritis. There's no real diet that cures arthritis or anything like that. We do lean towards the Mediterranean diet because of some of its really fantastic anti-inflammatory properties. And there's some pretty good research around that. But again, with exercise, it's kind of similar with exercise. There's no, there's no one exercise that's a miracle cure or, or management tool what we need to do is be smart about it and what we choose and this might help you so swimming and water aerobics cycling stationary bike rowing seated type exercises have something in common and that is their non-weight bearing exercises now for those people with um arthritis Non-weight bearing and low weight bearing or low impact exercises are generally prescribed um, 
more so, um, particularly at the beginning of an exercise regime, like starting exercising again, dependent on um, disability as well, um, because they're not as hard or demanding on our joints. And remember, cartilage um, is there to cushion and absorb shock. And if that's compromised, then doing things that has a lot of load or a lot of impact is going to put a more strain on, on, on that joint, for example. So we start here on non-weight bearing exercises. Now, these are great. They may not cause as much um, pain starting out doing the exercise itself during or afterwards. That's great. Choose these. That's fine. You can also increase the intensity. Swim longer, swim faster, water aerobics, um, move quicker in the water. Cycling, you can cycle fast or slow. You get the point. Huh. Then you move up to um, more weight-bearing um, but low-impact exercises. So this is the walking, gentle walking. This is using a cross trainer, for example. Um, that's a gym, that's a piece of gym equipment where um, your arms and legs are on sort of this little machine. You move them back and forth like this and you're kind of swinging through the air. <laughs> General gardening, I'm not talking about chopping down massive trees and lugging big logs everywhere, just general gardening. Um, bowls. <laughs> that's supposed to be let's move on clearly can't spell tonight um strength training so the, um the manipulation of handheld weights or seated machine weights these are weight bearing yes so you could be standing okay you're walking for example you're gardening so you're moving up and down. posturally you're moving up and down Diane, may I ask if you wouldn't mind please putting your yourself on mute? I can't reach you right now. I'm just wondering if you could please put yourself on mute. Thank you. Um, so these are these are weight bearing, yes, but they're low impact. So you'll see the difference moving up the chain. And here we have high impact. So we're weight bearing, but they're high impact. And high impact, you can see there's a lot more movement in these. So stair climbing, we're moving, jogging and running. Um, there's a lot more um, movement within these exercises. There's a lot more impact within these exercises. We might be leaving the ground with one or two feet and landing with one or two feet, like skipping, dance classes, uphill walking. These are higher impact. So what's, so as I was saying before, people with particularly severe arthritis um, who may be restricted with movement and are in a lot of pain, they might choose more exercises from the non-weight bearing list, just for example. But if you're earlier on um, in your condition and it's not so bad, then your weight bearing but low impact and your weight bearing and high impact exercises can still be done. And it's not that they cause um, and it's not that they cause um, sorry, excuse me. All right. And it's not that they cause um, damage per se, but what they what these high impact um, exercises may do is cause us a little bit of discomfort afterwards. Um, and so it's about managing um, what you can and can't do. It's about managing your week, doing what you can do within the limitations um, of your condition and other comorbidities. There is no right or wrong answer. It's more so what's right for you, okay? High impact is fine. It depends. Non-weight bearing is, is also fine. But think about this. If you had osteoporosis, I would not be recommending you to do 
non-weight bearing. I would want you to be doing weight bearing low and high impact, okay? Because bone um, needs that impact um, to get stronger. So comorbidities can be difficult um, if you've got osteoporosis and arthritis. It's just about choosing the right exercises for you that particular day, that particular week. Okay, let's have a little look at managing pain and arthritis through pacing. So let's just start with um, smart tips, okay? So being smart about what you do and when you do it. So starting slow, going slow, and what you want to do is build tolerance to exercise slowly and progressively doing it over time okay it's not it's not a sprint you have to take it's like it, it's building up um capacity over time so it will depend on your level of fitness if you haven't started if you don't exercise or you want to increase your intensity so it depends on your level of fitness fitness on how much you will do and when so you're talking time frequency and intensity so you'll be manipulating those as you start to increase tolerance um, and, and capacity. Um, so you want to take a, you want to take notice of your body's um, at how you are tolerating exercise, what exercise um, is best for you and your particular joint or joints. So it takes some time to adjust to activity. And look, it might start off being only three to five minutes, two times a day. Um, and you might do that for the first week or two weeks, depending on where you are on that fitness level or scale. And then what you want to do to see improvements is you need to increase frequency, increase duration. So you have to manipulate some aspect of intensity. So what you want to do, find your Goldilocks zone, which means that you may have to poke the bear every now and again to see where that sweet spot is, okay? couple of days you might add on 10 minutes okay you may then pay for it the next day that's okay now you've learned maybe adding 10 minutes I was a bit much for this week I'm only going to add five okay so building slowly over time that was just an example everybody's going to be slightly different we're going to speak about M a little bit more in detail um, after this slide but M is for modify activity when arthritis symptoms increase and try, but but still try to stay active, um, but be smart about it. I'm particularly talking about those people who experience experience flare ups with their rheumatic autoimmune conditions. Activity should be joint friendly, which we just spoke about. Joint friendly would be for those people with arthritis would be low impact. Okay. Um, I don't like the wording around it because it means that if low impact is joint friendly, well, then what's high impact? Is that not joint friendly? <laughs> it is. It most certainly is. And I highly encourage doing it. <clears throat> it just depends on a lot of things. Uh, recognizing safe uh, spaces and places to be active. And I bring this up because as we get older, um, other things like our sight, for example, start to decline, particularly our mobility starts to decline. So this is for those people who need to be wary, who may even, who might actually use, um, like, for example, now walking aids already. So for those people, um, be familiar, uh, exercise in a familiar space. Um, so whether it's walking around um, your community um, and, and knowing where everything is, knowing the footpaths, knowing the busy crossings. I'm talking about things like this. Um, doing exercise in Crocs isn't great, okay? We want to ensure that the shoes that you're wearing are, uh, they're not going to fall off you and, and cause you a trip hazard. Speaking of trip hazards, it's best to um, exercise uh, where there is um, space, okay? So, and no cords, and of course, you're looking at rugs that might flip and trip. So, recognizing safe places and ways to be active. 
And last but not least, of course, the T is to talk to a health professional or certified exercise specialist if you're needing help to start or needing help to progress. Okay, so <clears throat> modifying through pacing. So there are three main elements on how to pace through an activity, okay? So the aim of pacing is to achieve um, and then maintain fairly even level activity, activity, activity levels throughout the day rather than, for example, trying to do cram everything into the morning or cram everything into one particular day just because you feel better or you can, okay? And I'm saying let's try, try to cram your 150 minutes into one day. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so pacing should be applied to all of your activities, work and leisure. Um, <clears throat> It's certainly not about stopping the activities or that you enjoy or any activities for that matter. And pacing can be a tricky skill to learn. So it takes some time. And again, you're gonna have to trial and error your way through this. But essentially your takeaway from tonight is to take frequent and short breaks, gradually increase the amount of exercise or act whatever it is, activity that you do, okay? Again, um, if you're training for a marathon, you can't train a week out, okay? And then expect to do the 40 whatever Ks it is. You need months, okay? So gradually increase the amount you do. Break up tasks into smaller bits if you can. And if you can't, again, frequent short breaks. Because what you don't want to do is enter what's called the boom and the bust cycle, okay? So does it sound familiar that one morning you wake up and um, you don't feel as stiff or painful, although those people with arthritis, I don't know whether they're, but that's the case. Um, but you're gonna have you're having a good day. Let's just say that you wake up, you're having a good day. Things feel a little bit easier, a little bit freer, not as much pain, and so you you're having a good day, and so you think, right, I'm gonna get all those things done. I'm gonna tick all those things that I have on my list. I'm gonna do it what often happens the next day what happens afterwards can anybody put in the chat box what does the next day look like when you hit all that checklist you do all the activities because you felt good does anybody feel a little painful and uncomfortable the next day wrecked there they are they're coming through it's a disaster there we are good I was thinking oh no maybe people are feeling great which is good um but I thought I'm not talking to the right audience they feel sore it's a disaster they feel wrecked they feel tired okay so we know where we're going with this exactly exhausted low energy and sore fantastic look I know the temptation is there when you're having a good day, okay, a good pain day or a good arthritis day. I know the temptation is there, but pacing is key. Remember, pacing is key regardless of the day, good day, bad day. So what happens is you're in this boom and bust cycle. <clears throat> so here you've got overactivity, increased symptoms, prolonged rest, okay? Where we want to be is moderate activity always and limited or just the right amount of rest, okay? Now, listen, it is so easy to sit here and say it. It can be difficult depending on the day to implement, I understand. But try to aim for the activity rest cycle, okay? Try to aim for this more than this. This is going to happen. The overactivity, that's going to happen. But if that happens, keep in mind you, have, you haven't likely damaged yourself further. You haven't made anything worse. It's just the tolerance level to that amount of activity. You don't have it. You haven't progressively built it, okay? And so you've got, and also tolerance level to muscle strength. 
um, the tolerance level of, you know, the ceiling limit of your condition being arthritis, it has a ceiling limit, okay? So the next couple of days you'll be wrecked, but just know that you probably haven't damaged anything. That's a normal <clears throat> side effect, if you will, for going hard, okay? So try to keep moderate activity and, and, and the right amount of rest, limited rest. Okay, so <clears throat> this is what can happen. And this is what we want to, we, we don't want to see. This graph shows when you push through your pain, okay? So when you're having one of those, you're feeling really good days and you decide to do everything, okay? Um, when you push through the pain and you don't take the rest and you don't pace, your activity levels over time, they go down, okay? And you have cons these consistent um, flare-ups. And then because of those flare-ups, the pain increases. And then we start to get a bad um, relationship or we can build a bad relationship around pain, okay? Then we start feeling like we don't want to do exercise because exercise causes us pain, okay? Activity level is... Um, and pain flares, they're never going to be going straight up. So um, activity level continually progresses over time. It just goes up and up and up and up, and the, and the flares go down and down and down and down. It's never going to be like that. It's always be a little bit of a bumpy ride, but what we don't want to do is this, okay? We don't want to see continual flare-ups because you overdid it and then see the activity level going down, okay? Activity level going down is no fun um, for your body, so your general well-being, but of course, for your joints. Okay. So does the boom and bust cycle feel familiar to you? So here's a couple of questions to, to think about. And I think, I think we get it. So let me look at my time. I won't spend too much time here. <clears throat> so asking yourself, what happened during the boom? Sorry, the boom, the boom is the when you're feeling good, okay? Those days um, that are good and that's the boom, okay? Boom into action. Think about what you could and could not do and how you felt. And this would be someone's hypothetical answer to that. So someone feeling good, okay? They were able to mow both front and back lawns and it was felt really good to get that done I didn't need to rest at all and I know some of you are seeing red flags already aren't you and I was able to take the kids to the park for over an hour now you could be parent or you could be grandparent here um or you could be yeah you could you could even be the person experiencing the arthritis right now and and not not have kids should I say um I felt great and this person, my wife, um, was really happy as well because they could see me happy. There are so many elements happening here. They could spend time with kids, whether they're directly their own or grandparents. Their significant other was happy because this other person was, you know, up and about and interacting and contributing. And how wonderful that is. What an expectation. You ticked. But... What happens during the bus period? And the bus period is then the bad days that follow. Think about what you could do, what you could not do and how you felt. So following that lovely day, <laughs> they could barely move. I stayed in bed. I felt down. I felt angry. Okay, so physically they feel wrecked, like some of you said, <clears throat> fatigued. And I want to know mentally, emotionally, how do you feel? If you want to contribute, you can put it in the chat box. I've got it up. I can see this person felt down. They felt angry. Maybe you feel disappointed. Maybe you feel defeated, you know, because here comes pain again and you know you're out for three days. What also happened, not, 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 did, not just did this person internally feel bad, they were externalizing it. So then they started yelling at significant others and people that they loved. So they were taking it out on kids, for example, a fight with the wife, okay? Couldn't understand why the pain was worse today. Now you guys understand it because we looked at the boom and the bust and I think you've already experienced it before, but they didn't understand why and they couldn't get anything else done. And... I had to take extra pain medication, which, by the way, may not work. 
and now I might not have enough to get me through the next month, okay? Does this sound familiar to you? Has this been you before? So what could we do differently? What could have this person done differently? What are some of the strategies that you use? Okay, we just spoke about it. We could pace, okay? So this person's like, well, I guess it was a mistake to do so much in one day. That's right, okay. Um, it would have been better if I, he uses the word, had stuck to the pacing plan. And even though I felt great getting those jobs done, I felt even worse over the next few days and caused a problem with my family. Hmm. So while the elements, some of the elements of this scenario may not resonate, with you, for example, kids or a partner, I feel perhaps the 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 um the, the emotional side of it you may have experienced and the physical side of it, the pain you have experienced. And, and that's why we want you to remember the boom and bust cycle. And we remember we want moderate activity, limited rest. We want to pace our activities as best we can. Life happens as best we can over time. <clears throat> remember, we want to take small and short, frequent breaks, um, break big tasks up into smaller ones and get them done over the day. With pacing, it's all about patience and it's um, not about getting it all done in the one hit. Okay. Thumbs up for pacing. I'm just going to move on through to type of exercise and if you're feeling pain and then I'll come to any questions. <clears throat> so this is our last sort of topic for this evening. Um, so what kind of exercises should you do? Well, we sort of covered this, but what I didn't cover before, my there's our lovely pictures, We've got aerobic and we've got strength training and we've spoken about high impact, low impact, weight bearing, non-weight bearing, okay? We hadn't spoken about sort of balance and flexibility. <clears throat> now, these are important, but if you got to do any and we're just talking about arthritis, stick to aerobic and strength because within those, there is balance and there is flexibility, okay? Um, there are elements of... of each of these types of activities um, in all of them. <laughs> but I certainly encourage balance and flexibility because of the lack of mobility that we have or that can occur due to our arthritis, so stiff joints, um, not being able to you know, go through a full range of motion. And because of that, we can also start to lose um, our proprioception. So the feeling of and the understanding of your brain of where you are in space. If we have reduced range of motion around a joint because structures aren't working as well, we start to lose proprioception around that joint. If we start to lose that, balance is compromised, okay? There are other ways in which balance can be compromised, like inner ear, for example, but so these are, are important as well. And you might like to do them in group activities or settings, so yoga and Pilates. There are balance type exercises and classes and flexibility classes um, out there. So um, good to investigate those types of exercises also. <clears throat> now, we're gonna talk about types of exercises. We've touched on a few I know. But when I say, particularly when I speak about strength training, everybody thinks, a lot of people think in the gym, weightlifting, like Arnold Schwarzenegger, that, that's not where I'm getting at or that's not what I'm getting at when it, comes to, when it comes to strength training, okay? Yes, you can go to the gym. Yes, you can lift weights. And I highly encourage that. But what if that's just not for you, okay? You don't like the gym. It smells, you know, like the weights, it's not for you. It never has been, okay. So I wouldn't tell, I wouldn't tell a client, I wouldn't push a client into doing this. What I want them to do is do something because something is, is better than nothing, okay? So there are other types of 
exercises that you can do that you may not even realize that they are. So we've spoken about gardening. Gardening is a fantastic way to exercise. And boy, can you be sore afterwards. So general weeding, et cetera. Um, digging and clipping there is mobility in that there is stretching there is flexibility there is strength training and there is an element of cardio no doubt oh if we got over there oh stair walking stair climbing <clears throat> i have a sedentary job at tafe um absolutely hate having to sit down in front of a computer all day i hate the thought of it but i do it we have stairs we have the emergency stairs, um, all the should I say that you know the fire stairs between floors. I walk them five times a day um, because they are a fantastic way to exercise and they elevate your heart rate quickly. Okay, so I do them. I go up and down twice. It takes me just a few minutes. My heart rate jumps, and I've think remember remember the sponge cartilage. I've added load. Okay, I've kept my joints healthy. So stairs are fantastic and you only need to do a few to get the heart rate pumping and to load the joints. Group classes, dancing, aerobics, any type of movement is fantastic and it's fun. It's got a social aspect. <clears throat> House cleaning, you love it or you hate it. Whichever way you feel about it, it's a fantastic way uh, to get some exercise and activity in. Okay. You can do low impact, or should I say low intensity to high intensity, okay? Water aerobics or warm water classes is fantastic, um, particularly if the water is um, set high, it's like 36, 35 degrees, like warm. Um, that reduces um, um, pain. Um, and then again, being born in the water also uh, reduces load off the joint so we know that that's good and we've spoken about sort of um, those non-weight bearing exercises being cycling or a cycle bike so there's lots of different types of ways that you can get moving it doesn't have to be in a gym to be strength based anyway another question for you pain when you feel pain um let we'll go with the context of arthritis Pain equals damage. True or false, in the chat box, off you go. False, 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 false. All right, people are coming through. You've either seen it before or you've kind of got the gist or the messages of tonight's webinar. All right, fantastic. I'm pretty sure I saw all false. It's all right if you saw if you you said true. When you were younger and you fell over, you were learning to ride your bike, or you were running on the asphalt at school and you fell over, and you scraped your knee and you looked down and it was bleeding. Okay, you broke the skin. That is damage. So from a young age, and it's no fault of our own; it's normal that when we feel pain. We've got a very strong link because of the narrative there to damage. Okay. And as we get older, um, being in pain and, and having things that are damaged means that we can't contribute and we can't, we can't do what we want to do. We can't socialize. We can't contribute to the community. It limits us. So it gets worrying if we feel pain for lots of different reasons. But when it comes to arthritis, and majority of other musculoskeletal pain and less it's acute, there likely isn't any damage and not all, not in every case is there damage. So the answer is false. Pain doesn't always equal damage. It's just the narratives in which we have um, lived by and we've heard and absorbed um, <clears throat> that cause us to believe that every single time there is pain with our arthritis, uh, with our low back, that we've damaged something. So some pain when we're exercising, when we have arthritis, some pain is normal, okay? So it's it's okay. It's okay to feel, it's okay to feel a bit of pain. What we say is we're sore. We might feel a bit painful, but likely we're safe. So it's normal to feel some pain. 
discomfort or stiffness, particularly after um, exercising, particularly after starting a new exercise, okay, or exercise activity program, whatever it might be. Did you know that it can take about six to eight weeks for your joints and your muscles to get used to an activity? So that's why it's important to stick it out sometimes, okay? And over time, we start to see a reduction in the experience of pain. So just because we feel pain doesn't necessarily mean that it is tissue damaging. Now, that doesn't mean that the pain isn't real. It's still there. We have to manage it. It also doesn't mean that um, every time there isn't damage. There are occasions where there might be, okay? But you still need to or you want to move. So what you need to do is modify. Now, we've already spoken about pacing, but we might like to modify using the FIT principle. So frequency. Are you having a bad pain day, having a bad pain week, whatever it might be? You could have also had some form of small injury. And if that was the case, perhaps you can have a look at reducing the frequency, the days that you exercise per week. Maybe instead of the seven, you do every, every other day. Intensity. So instead of um, not being able to um, talk while you're exercising, maybe you bring back the intensity so that you could have a conversation with a friend while you went for a walk. So you're doing that moderate, that talk test, that moderate intensity. Time, instead of going for an hour walk, perhaps you're going to reduce it to half an hour and type. Now, here's where you can slide up and down the non-weight bearing, low impact, high impact scale. If you're low impact, high impact, that's where you sit. Okay, that's your fitness level. That's your ability level, tolerant level, capacity level. If you're, if you're, if potentially you are injured or potentially just feeling a lot of pain, slide the scale down to non-weight bearing. Okay, so change up the type. Always ask for guidance. Physiotherapists and exercise physiologists are there to help. Top tip when to see a doctor so when there might actually be tissue damage if the pain is significantly sharp stabbing constant shooting if you start to limp more than perhaps that so this is out of the ordinary for you okay <clears throat> pain that persists for more than two hours and it gets it's getting worse at night perhaps it's accompanied by swelling particularly immediate swelling not just swelling, it becomes inflamed, okay? So you can have a swelling of fluid but not be inflamed, okay? I start to feel red and hot. It doesn't get better with rest or medication. These are the times where we might go, look, best just to see a doctor in case. <clears throat> now, if you weren't aware, um, we have Arthritis New South Wales has our Get Moving and Get Moving Plus booklets and exercises. I've just seen the time. My apologies. I'm running slightly over. These are online. They're free for you to access. I'm going to be going through each of these um, over the next three webinars this month. So Monday the 13th, 10.30 and 7.30, I'll be looking at upper and lower um, body specific exercises from the Get Moving Plus series. Um, which is a little bit more rehab based and more joint, like more joint exercises I'll be going through with you. <clears throat> and on the 20th, no, the 21st um, is my last webinar and I'll be looking at the hand and feet exercises for arthritis. I'm basically just going through the book with you. That's what I'm going to be doing. I mean, showing you that. We can try and do some together. I think last time I got my foot right up here on the camera. Sorry if you saw that. Um, so come along if you want to know a little bit more about them. Uh, we also have dan dance classes and strength and balance classes that are online. We also have warm water classes that you can investigate. Um, I do see the time that it is 8.33. I'm happy to stick around for another few minutes. Those, if you need to go, that is fine.
Uh, I'm just going to stop the share and bring it back to the main Zoom page. Okay, thank you everybody for participating in the chat box tonight. I love seeing everybody's um, um, understanding and where everybody's at. And it's good because um, everybody seems to be getting the, the idea and the new messages about pain and exercise and their condition, which is fantastic. That's the whole point of these webinars. If you wanna ask a question, I'll try my best to answer it. You can put it in the chat box or you can come off mic and you can ask me if you have to go. Thank you so much for being here and I'll catch you next time. You're welcome, everybody. See you later. Um, if you prefer, I'll stop the recording as well. If you